Gamer Simulator, welcome back to the channel. I have longtime friend, long time no see, actually. That's We're true. catching up after a while. Caleb Holgerson, how you doing? I'm man? well. I'm well. Thanks for having me on, man. It's so great to get to reconnect. It's been a long time since we've gotten to, it to hang has out. Been. Yeah. Yeah, we were just catching up off off uh, cam well not off camera because we're still on right. camera, but um, <laughs> off recording about how like I think both of us were like closer to the beginning of our mm -hmm. journeys on our ministries and stuff, and it's just been fun fun to catch up. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you are right now, and how we can follow you. In your yeah, ministry. so I'm a worship pastor in Springfield, Missouri. Um, if you've been, if you followed, uh, me at all, or we're on here, like last time we were, we, we did a YouTube video together. I was probably somewhere else, but now <laughs> yeah. I'm in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> um, I run, uh, worship leader coaching, which is uh, similar to, Hey, worship leader. I'm just not <laughs> as good at a YouTuber. Uh, but I do a lot of blogging, <laughs> writing, things like that. Um, for worship leaders, just to help worship leaders, you know, get further faster in their mm. uh, faith journey, in their leadership journey, anything like that. So, uh, you know, got a couple books out there, got some blog stuff, got, you know, some video stuff. Instagram is probably where I hang out the most at worship leader coaching. Nice. Awesome. And I'll try to link those, uh, the website that will have like your resources, oh, cool. like the two books, becoming a worship pastor, I think yep, is the title yep. of it. Love that book. And then, um, the, uh, the writing yeah. house music. Yeah. Yes, that's right. I have both of those, by oh, the way. So everyone should go, go get them. Thanks, man. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, today I wanted to talk a bit about, you know, how not to be fake. Yeah. If they clicked on this video, like as worship leaders, we're in a position where, Sometimes, sometimes we have to like fake it till we sure. make it. Cause I, I got asked a question several years back now where a guy was like, Hey, what do you do? And he was just being real authentic. He was like, what do you do? And you don't feel like leading worship. And I was like, I lead worship. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my yep. job. But at the same, so there is that, there is that you got to push through. Yeah. And I think there's ways to do that. We can speak to that. But also like, I think a lot of people can, the distance, maybe the stage or being in a position over people can naturally remove them or make them feel like they, they, they can't be authentic. They don't know how they don't want to be maybe. So I want to speak to some of that authenticity of like, how can we as worship leaders be authentic and maybe we can go through maybe stuff for yeah. categories. Um, but I think the first one is I was watching some of your content, which everybody should over on Instagram about like teaching from stage. So sure. I was thinking one of those areas that may be a struggle for some people, maybe even for me, mm -hmm. I'm like, what's the balance between being authentic, being, being too authentic, making yeah. it too much about myself, teaching all that stuff. Do you have some words of wisdom for us? Well, I have some words. Hopefully they're of wisdom, you know, uh, <laughs> teaching is some teaching in, or in worship and on worship. Something that's very close to my heart. That's something I talk about all the time as a worship leader. And that's mm -hmm. because uh, I, I don't think people know how to worship because they, because I don't think people open their Bibles to learn how to worship. I think they open the Bibles to learn how to fix their lives if they open them at all. Uh, but yes. you're right. When you're teaching, you have to really strike a balance of what's authentic and what's maybe oversharing or what's inappropriate. Mm. And I think if we look culturally, uh, I think our culture gives some, bad examples of authenticity, things that they say, hey, mm. this is authentic. And I would go, yeah, maybe, but it also, it, but it's not full of wisdom and it doesn't make you a good leader. And I've, mm. I've, I've three sort of, uh, examples that I'll give and, and I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit with these things. So bear with me. I'm trying, I'm just trying to make a point <laughs> with them, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I would say culture gives us three people uh, as examples of authenticity, and they're, they're, they're not good people. So we have the sad person, the unsure person, and the oversharer. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a portion of our society that thinks that uh, you are only being authentic if you're, like, crying, like you're weeping or you're, you're wearing your, your emotions on your sleeve. I think there's people out there that, that, that see, I don't think they intend to think that, but I think that's, that's kind of what they believe. I don't think that yeah. makes you a good leader. 
You know, if you're just on stage right. as a worship leader and you're just weeping constantly, it's going to be hard to follow you. <laughs> it's going to be hard for you to go in a certain direction. It's going to practically, it's probably going to be hard to sing, you know? So there's, mm. you know, the sad person. I don't think that makes a good leader. There's the unsure person. This is the person mm. that I think a lot of us uh, actually fall into this category sometimes by accident where we'll make a statement that is true or authentic um, but then we'll go, but that's just my opinion or, mm. um, but I'm still figuring this out too. Or, um, I don't know. They'll just end it with, I don't know. Right. And so, right. um, but the unsure person, like if you're on stage teaching something <laughs> and then you go, but I'm still figuring this out. I don't know about this either. Well, why would I listen to you? Right. I mean, that yeah. doesn't make a yeah. great leader if you're going, well, I don't I, I don't really know anything about this subject. Well, then what gives you the authority <laughs> to teach on it? All right. So I, so the sad person, the unsure person, then the oversharer. And if you've worked mm. in a church for more than five minutes, you've met an oversharer. Right. People will just they'll just come up and just unload on you everything about their life you know their their hurts habits hang-ups sins struggles whatever and mm. we all have those things but we need to have a uh, a balance in how we share those things versus what we keep to ourselves and it you know scripture tells us to confess our sins to our brother right so uh, mm. that's a good thing to do but as a leader you have, i think you have to think about where you're doing those things yeah. where are you confessing where are you sharing uh there's a, a, a an author that I used to read a lot of his books. Um, his name's Donald Miller. He wrote a book several years ago, Blue Like yeah. Jazz, wrote, Jazz, you know, A Million Miles on a Thousand Years, a bunch of books. He's moved on now to the, he does like marketing and stuff now. But mm -hmm. um, he, I heard an interview with him one time where he was, if someone asked him, you know, how do you, uh, when is it appropriate to write about your struggles? Because he does, he writes a lot about his life. And he said, well, when I'm past it, when I'm looking back mm. on the struggle, not when I'm in it. And the mm. reason for that is when you're in it, you haven't learned the lesson from it yet. You know, uh, maybe parts of it, but not all of it. You know, you're <laughs> still dealing with it. You, uh, and so it's kind of like, you know, if, if there's someone in your church who is going to going through a divorce right now, they're probably not the person to lead the divorce care group, right? They're, the, they're the person who needs to be in it, but they probably shouldn't right. be leading it up. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you've got the sad person, the unsure person, the oversharer. I think a lot of times we think those people <clears> are authentic, but they're not necessarily the great leaders. Um, and that's not to say that you shouldn't have emotion. It's not to shit say, you know, you can't have uh, questions or doubts sometimes. That's not to say you can't share things with people, uh, but you need to have wisdom and how you do it, uh, you know, you need to have wisdom in, in just how you speak. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, those three caricatures of people. I think, you know, me being vulnerable and being a little bit of an overshare right now, uh, actually, that's not the one I was going to point out. It's the middle one, the unsure. Mm. I think that's my personality type where I, I am a people pleaser mm. or I'm a peacemaker. And so, I may throw out something strong, but I'm like, ooh, that might land wrong. So I want to, I want right. to soften that a little bit. And my personality at that, coupled with um, the truth of the gospel mm -hmm. and the things that we're teaching, like I need to make sure that I'm removing my personality as much as I can, right. or, or the the fault, the fault, the bad parts of my personality, and not not make the gospel seem weak. Yeah, like that's that's my personal yeah. thing because because the gospel is not weak. The truth of the gospel is is firm yeah. and sure and something somebody can uh, put their hope and trust in. And so, you know, just me as a leader, that that's one thing. So the same with those other caricatures, like we don't want to um, dilute the gospel yeah. because we're struggling with these things. So it's things we can, we can be working on. Absolutely. I think that's, man, that's, those, those are ways we can uh, be fake, I guess, yeah. make the gospel seem yeah. fake, uh, yeah. you know, cause it's like, oh, if, the, if if the gospel is really as unsure as that guy just made it sound, then I don't, I don't know if that's what I need. Right, and so, I, right. you know, yeah, yeah, man, I think, I think that that's great. Those are, those are very helpful, um, like categories or characters to think through. Um, another area I was thinking of like, uh, worship leaders, my struggle mm -hmm. being fake is, is 
if they ever get the chance yeah. <laughs> to not be on the stage leading. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's more rare, but being the same person on stage as I am off the yeah. stage, uh, or we are as we're leading worship, like some people, you know, they just might feel like, I just don't feel like being that engaged when I'm not on stage, but I'm on stage. I'm, I'm that way. I mean, I have even dealt with that. Me and my wife are talking. Like, I felt like we would go visit churches and I would be, uh, especially when I was younger, you know, just not in a bad way, but just soaking it yeah. in. Like, what is this environment? Sure. Uh, what am, what am I a part of right sure. now? And, and really missing, not in a bad way, not from an e evil perspective or anything, uh, or agenda, but it was just like, I was missing that corporate worship yeah. time because I was just focused on other things. And I feel like, man, uh, as a worship leader, man, I want to, I want to be the same mm -hmm. as I am on stage when the camera's on me, or when people are looking at me as I am in my house or when I'm in the congregation. Um, what about you? Do you have any wisdom on that? You know, I, I, I've thought about this a lot because I think a lot of us do as worship leaders. Uh, you know, one thing that I teach worship leaders all the time and tell worship all the time is to model worship, right? So mm -hmm. if you're going to ask your church to lift their hands in worship, you need to be lifting your hands on stage. If you're going to ask your church to kneel before the throne again, you probably need to kneel on stage. You know, if you're going to ask your church to yeah. sing, you need, it needs to be obvious that your band is singing. Um, but part of that too is, you know, when I'm on stage, I am uh, directly leading people. And so, mm. you know what? I might lift my hands a little bit more than I do if I'm off stage. And I think that's okay. <clears throat> I don't think that's inappropriate. Yeah. I don't think that's being someone else. I think that's just the role that I'm in at the time. Mm. You know, if I'm on stage, you know, I have a responsibility mm. to be leading. If I'm on stage, yeah. if I'm off stage, I still have a responsibility to be worshiping, uh, but I yeah. don't necessarily need to, um, do all the same things. I'm not going to sing yeah. as loud if I'm not on stage, <laughs> right? I'm not going to, yeah. uh, you know, go, I'm not going to be like before chorus, go, come on church. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm not on stage, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know yeah. sing this out. I'm not going to do those things, you know? So, man, I think you should, I would love to see somebody <laughs> walking down, walking down the aisle, like helping the worship leader out. Come on, sing that man, chorus. That would be <laughs> hilarious, but, <laughs> that, that might end up on worship fails. Though. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's so good about, um, knowing the difference in the role there. And, uh, I, oh, man, I had a thought too, and I'm slipping my mind now that we just joked about the yeah. guy helping out down the aisle. Well, it'll come back to me though, but I think that's, that's a good, um, difference to make, to point out. Mm -hmm. Um, man, I wish I remembered that part. I wish I could edit this out because I had something I wanted to add. Well, it, you know, it, I think, Anyways. you know, it's something to think about too is, you know, what does, it, it's, it's specifically in that, what does, you know, scripture say is true worship? You know, it's, it's mm. worshiping in spirit and truth. That's John, it was John four, I think. Uh, so, you know, look at that and go, okay, am I worshiping in spirit and truth on stage and off stage? Am I worshiping mm. um, uh, from my revelation of Jesus being my Lord and yeah. Savior, you know, <clears throat> and, and my knowledge of God because of him? Am I doing that on and off stage? Not necessarily am I lifting my hands the same way or am I, that's so true. Am I singing the same way? Um, because that's what is important to Jesus. Right, it's worshiping mm. the spirit and truth, yeah. not the physical things. Now, there's something right. to being physical in worship and worshiping with your whole self. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. But uh, you know, when Jesus said, "You know, true worshipers worship in spirit and truth," he was um, sort of rebuking the idea of which mountain you worship on matters. What, what the, pl mm. the place matters. The physical things; uh, those don't matter as much as who you are worshiping. So if you keep that in mind, I think you're going to keep from being fake in either location or in the secret place in the clo the prayer closet at home. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's real good. I think I remember one thing I was going to say about the, the difference between being on stage and not on stage is I often tell our volunteers to like go the extra mile. So sure. I use the example of, of like, um, you know, cause when we get on stage, especially those who might struggle with, with fear or something like stage presence, uh, they tend to freeze up more than they, they realize. Yeah. So it's like, you know, when you go to a play mm -hmm. and act, they're acting and you see like the main characters 
after the show or during the intermission, you see them up close where you can just shake their hands and their, their makeup is so like way over the top, yeah. you know, very contrasting. You're yeah. like, Whoa, yeah. that that's not what you look yeah. like over there. But on stage, they had to go that like extra 10 or 50%, yeah. whatever it is just to look normal from stage. And so that's one thing I tried to say to our volunteers. And so that kind of speaks into the, like, well, that's just talking about the appropriate physical action yeah. of what we're saying. Like you even mentioned, like if we're saying raise our hands and we should raise our hands. And and if you're leading people on that, it's like, Hey, I'm going to go the extra mile. So that you guys know right. that this is an appropriate response. Right. I think that that's golden. But then the remember, like you were just saying that our, our personal time of worship is what fuels and yeah. flows out of us into our, our public time of worship. That's yeah. the, that's the main thing. Well, and that's, we're that's, to get across. that's, I mean, you can't be, you can't lead worship with any sort of authenticity. <clears throat> Uh, if you're not yeah. worshiping when you're not on stage, if you're not having those moments yeah. with Jesus. And, you know, that's something that every worship leader I've ever met has said, and every worship mm. leader I've ever met struggles with. Struggles with <laughs> you yeah. all struggle. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Um, and, and part of it is, too, I think, you know, because corporate worship is different than personal worship. And so when you're on stage in that court, you know, you're worshiping corporately, there's, you know, a hundred people or 500 people or 5,000 people, whatever your church is, you know, you have all those people worship. It feels, worship feels different and engaging mm. with the Lord yeah. feels a little bit different. And so then we go, well, is it the same? Am I doing the same thing? Am I being the same person? I honestly, I talk to worship leaders a lot, just like you do, Jimmy. And I know that it's rare for me to find a worship leader that is super inauthentic. <laughs> I do yeah. find a lot of worship leaders that are worried <laughs> that they're inauthentic. Though. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's yeah. true. That's true. Um, yeah, I think um, I have had some experiences, I think, and I was just actually talking about this in a previous video uh, of like, you know, leadership that was just not done well. And I feel like that's where I've learned the most from yeah. is watching other leaders. I would like to say, man, I learned so much from that leader. And usually it's, I learned so much of what not to be from <laughs> right, that leader. Right, right. And, uh, and the being the, the same person on off the stage even goes to like, uh, not in the process of physical worship, but just in our interactions with our teams yeah. and like with, with people of the congregation. So, you know, we turn on this, Oh, that's, what a beautiful name and all this stuff. Then we get off stage and it's just completely right. different. And you're like, wow, on stage, I felt like, you know, I trusted you and I, I felt that way, but backstage, you're completely different. Sure. And, uh, and I think the culture of our teams can, can be an outflowing of how we are as leaders in that same way. And so for us to be authentic, it also means like realize when we're on stage, we are, are serving our yep. church and we're off stage, maybe in the green room or between services, like we're serving our people. Yep. And, uh, when we're at home, we're serving our families yep. or whoever God has put in our life, like be that of a servant. Cause that's what Christ yep. was, right? Like he, he came not to be served, but yep. to serve. And so, um, man, I think that's, that's probably one of the main key things that helps keep me in check of not being shallow, not being fake is to serve other people. And so just this, just to use myself as an example, cause I'm not always great at it. Um, this past week in rehearsal, um, I was like, I was done with everything and people were still coming in. And, uh, one of our bass players, you know, I was like, Hey man, do you want a chair? And he's like, I would love a chair. So I just went and got him a chair yeah. and I was like, Oh, you want a music stand? And I went and got it for him. And he's like, I don't need a music stand. And I was like, I'll give it to someone else. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, but the whole thing was like, in my mind, I want them to know I want to serve yeah. them, but that was really for me. I was like, I need to check my heart right now. I need to serve somebody. Yep. I need this. I need this. I need to to get out of my own head, to get out of everything else, and just serve someone. Yeah. I think that can help us from from being shallow. Absolutely, man. That's a bunch of gold right there. That's worth a like and a subscribe. Mm. Hey, you're on YouTube too, right? I am. Somebody needs I to am. subscribe. You you post every now every and then. Every now and then, they, and there I do more of shorter shorter videos, mm -hmm. uh, kind of you know quick tips, things like that. But yeah, come go check it out. I'd love to hang out with you guys. Check it out. So I think uh, you know another point of authenticity or where you know we we can lean into um, what's authentic to us personally is looking at the gifts that God has gifted you with, or, mm -hmm. you know, gifted you with what skills you've developed as a worship leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are you just, what are you good at? You know, look at those gifts and then you're, you're, you're going to feel a lot more like you're being authentic in what you're yeah. doing. I mean, for me, uh, I'm a, 
I'm a good musician. I'm not a great musician. Mm. Okay, so mm. I, I'm, I'm good at what I do. I'm good at playing the guitar. I'm an okay singer, not an amazing one, but I can, I can get the job done if there's a bucket around. You know, I can, I can carry it yeah. in then. But you know, uh, but where I, what I'm better at is pastoring. Right, I'm better mm. at yeah, yeah. Uh, shepherding and worship and, say, and, and teaching, modeling, encouraging those things in worship. And so, you know, it, it, if I have a musical struggle or I don't know what version of this song to do, I'll, I'll rely on somebody else on my team. Uh, there's a guy on my mm. team. He's a bass player. His name's Lance. He's an incredible musician. And so I'll go to Lance yeah. and say, hey, man, what do you think about this? What do you think we yeah. should do there? And then I'm relying on his strengths. And then it frees me up to work in mine where I can be encouraging worship. Yeah. And I think uh, maybe some self-evaluation, which is, which is difficult to yeah. do, but watching yourself back on the live stream yeah. or whatever, like being, being like what you said, being true with yourself mm -hmm. about what your strengths and weaknesses are will help mm -hmm. you to just be a real person because yeah. we are all gifted with certain gifts yep. from God to serve his church. And we don't all have the same gifts right. and we're not all equal in those gifts. And that's okay right. as long as we're like progressing or like yeah. pursuing excellence is something we say at, yep. at my church. I was just speaking with somebody and they, they chose not to say excellence. They so chose to say they were um, always progressing, mm -hmm. like always mm -hmm. just trying to move forward in our, in, in our, our craft, mm -hmm. our, our gifting, mm -hmm. our talents, and let that be our act of yep. worship. And I think that's another way for us as leaders to um, be real and be honest with ourselves, be real and be honest with the people around us. And like you said, like some people might find that a struggle yeah. to go to a bass player to ask for advice about something musical when like, Oh, well I should be the one to know this and then suffer the right. team suffers for it or, or the service service suffers right. for it. Right. Well, and, and, yeah. and, and the opposite is true too. If you find your, you're, you know, you're a worship <laughs> leader and you go, man, I'm really good at the musical part. But honestly, mm. I struggle when it comes to teaching, but I have a, uh, there's a, you know, a, a, a high school history teacher on my team who would, who would mm. gladly teach something if I gave him the opportunity, man, use that yeah. guy, <laughs> use him, right. you know, yeah. if it's appropriate for your context. Now there's some churches <laughs> where the lead pastor go, Hey, I don't know about that. Okay. You know, but you know, find those ways to use your team and their gifts and, and, and be confident in yours. And then work on yours off stage, you know, work on yeah. those weaknesses. Don't, I mean, don't use those things as an excuse to say, okay, well, I'm never going to be a good teacher. No, 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 no. Work on those in the smaller settings, go, you know, into a small group or your youth group or whatever, and work on those things there, work on them with your family. How can I teach in my, yeah. you know, with my family, with my kids, whatever, um, Work, you know, work on those weaknesses. That way, you do can you continue, continue to develop. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't use this is my gift as an excuse to not not you know do not grow. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's not it's not an excuse. Uh, like just naming it is is the battle to is, is the first step yeah. in the battle of like getting better yeah. at it. If we just yeah. ignore it, then yeah, man. I think that's 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 good. That's a good word. A lot of wisdom there. So you you said you didn't know if you had. You might just have words, not wisdom, but I think there's a lot of wisdom there. It's worth a like on this video for sure. I agree. I agree. Awesome, like the man. video. <laughs> like the video. I mean, feed that YouTube that algorithm right. monster. Anyways, man, well, I appreciate you coming on the channel yeah. and we'll do this more often. Please. And, yeah, uh, great. Yeah, let's do it. So, man, hey, guys, if you want to check out his channel, I'll try to link that down yeah. below. And his website, more importantly, he's got a few books that are yeah. really helpful. Uh, the Becoming a Worship Pastor, I think. And this, this, it would have a lot to do with what we talked about today. That would, If you want to dive in deeper and get real practical, I would go get that book. Oh, and, um, yeah, so uh, thanks for having us. No, thank you for coming on here. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> guys, thanks, thanks for thanks watching. Thanks for having me. Thanks for yeah. – uh, thank you. Man, it's so good to, good, the, good to be hanging. I love getting to talk All the about things. leading worship. It is probably my favorite topic. Yeah, it really is for me too. Awesome. All right, guys, we'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.